Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to a review of The Link, the second studio record by the French metal band Gojira. Today we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the record, so I decided to go back and see if it still holds up or not. My story with this band is quite simple. I've started listening to their music at the end of 2012. I've stumbled upon them on accident because I was searching for heavy bands and I didn't know those guys, but the name catched my attention. I've already reviewed Gojira last year for the 10th anniversary of Elephant Sausage. At least that's how I'm going to call that fifth studio record. I loved it. Elephant Sausage was great, so what's up with the link? The first thing we're going to talk about is the cover art. It's just a tree on a red background, but it's just great. We've had no lineup change since 1998, which means the same guys wrote and recorded every studio record. The production is alright, it could have been better, I think this is the weakest sounding album from Gojira. It's still fine, some people complain about the snare sound, I think it's okay. Message is diverse, songs are about various topics, it's mostly introspective stuff about mankind, humanity, people. I enjoy those lyrics, but I am not going to pretend that I understand everything they are trying to say to us. Structure of the tracks is advanced, which means we have some verses and choruses that repeat, but also some parts that happen only once, and usually those are like two or three parts per song. Music on this record is a mix of death metal, groove metal and progressive metal. The record starts with the title song, The Link, and the first thing you're going to notice are the tribal elements, like some weird drumming noises, some background vocals. They remind me of Sepultura Roots record. I think this works in the favor of the album because I truly enjoy all of that stuff. Later we hear some drums and Mario's drumming on this record is phenomenal. It's the best part of the music here. His precision, his groove, his blast beats, just everything works. Next is the bass, it's audible. The bassist plays his own lines, which is very cool, especially in the song Over the Flows. The guitar work is stellar throughout the entire record. Some of it reminds me of old school 90s death metal, some groove metal like Pantera, and finally we have the vocals. I love Joss screaming and growling, it's amazing. He also does some clean vocals here, not singing, but like talking, like whoa, 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 something like that. All of it is fine. So I think that this song, the first one, is one of the weaker tracks on the record. I still enjoy it because of its grooviness and atmosphere, but overall, this is not a masterpiece. It's just a great track. I especially enjoy the beginning of it and the middle part. 8 out of 10. Death of Me is way better. I love the verses here because they have that playfulness to them. You know, tutum, 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 tutum. It reminds me of Empalot, their other band. Tutum, 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 tutum. And also, in the middle of the song, we have some very cool tremor riffs. They are very atmospheric. That's basically my favorite part. But still, this is not a perfect song. But still, truly wonderful. 9 out of 10. Connected is like the link between Death of Me and Remembrance. It's not a song, it's an intro, it has some tribal noises. I enjoy it, but it's nothing special. 7 out of 10. Remembrance is a banger. It's a very death metalish sounding track. I love some of the riffs and some of them are not that interesting to me. But the last minute of this song is just so beautiful. I love that breakdown. So heavy, so groovy. Truly majestic. 8 out of 10. Tori is an intro like Connected. It has no vocals, but I enjoyed this one much more than Connected. It has a very beautiful, eerie atmosphere. It's like a soundtrack for some video game. 8 out of 10. Indians is my fifth favorite song on this record. I just love the main riff or the verse riff, however you call it. It has a very cool vibe to it. It sounds very nostalgic for some reason. I also enjoy the middle part of the song. This one is truly a cool journey. 9 out of 10. Embrace the world. I'm not going to lie to you. 
I enjoy this song the least from everything else. Sure, Connected is weaker, but Connected is an intro and this is an actual song. I love the grooviness here, the death metal elements, the vocals, the drumming as usual is stellar, like on every song, but for some reason this song isn't that memorable as the rest of them. I still enjoy it and think it's great, but yeah, this is the weakest one. 8 out of 10. Finally we have Inward Movement. This song starts the golden age of this record, because from this point on only bangers await us. This track is a masterpiece. I love the atmosphere. The first two minutes of this track are just so evil and menacing. I love the atmosphere, the vibe. It's truly sinister sounding. And then we have that last final minute of the song with those beautiful guitar riffs, the drumming, just everything. I love this song from beginning to the end. 10 out of 10. Over the Flows is even better for me. Sure, it has a more basic structure than the rest of the songs, but I love the atmosphere. The vocals here are beautiful, the guitar riffs, the verses, the choruses, just everything. This song reminds me of Tool for some reason. It has that vibe to it. 10 out of 10. Wisdom Comes is my favorite song on this record. And it's hilarious because it was written before the first album. I think it was on the 2000 EP, which was called the same, Wisdom Comes. It might have been even recorded before that. I don't remember the old school Gojira demos. I don't listen to them that much. But I'm sure this song was written in the 90s. Anyways, this is a death metal banger. I love the beginning, the blast beats, the drumming. The double bass work by Mario is great on the entire album, not just here. But this song is truly so full of energy and it's so intense and I love the grooviness. Come wisdom to us! Or something like that. Wow! And then we have those guitar riffs, which are amazing as well. And then in the middle of the track. We have that cool breakdown. <laughs> I just love this song. 10 out of 10. And the final track, Dawn. It's an instrumental piece. I love the sounds of nature at the beginning and in the middle, I guess. The first part of the song is great. I have nothing against it. But then we have that cool, groovy part, you know. Doom, doom. Doom, 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 doom. I love that thing so much. You know, basically, you should listen to this song at every dawn, every day. It just works. 10 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is stable and the flow is fitting, replayability. Yeah, it's an excellent record. I enjoyed it from beginning to the end. It doesn't have any weak songs. Sure, it has the weakest production, but it doesn't bother me. There are some very great bangers here. Dawn, Wisdom Comes, Over the Flows, Inward Movement, Indians, Remembrance, Death of Me. These tracks are timeless. Celebrate the anniversary by spinning this record today. It deserves some love and attention, because I feel like it's underappreciated, and I think that it's better than Magma or Fortitude. I feel like to me this is the weakest album from the classic Gojira stuff, you know, the first five records, but I still love it very much. Gojira doesn't have any weak albums. The Way of All Flesh is always going to be my favorite one. I don't know why, but yeah, it just works like that. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me on my Instagram links in the description, I post their photos of CDs, memes and notifications about upcoming reviews, stuff like that. Check it out and I will see you in my other videos. Bye!